Hey guys, PK here. So many people ask me what rod and reel I use for uh, surf fishing. So let's talk about that really quick. Now, um, I actually have two new rods here. Um, both of these rods are the Akuma Salmon and Steelhead Rod. And they are the nine foot. Okay, this one is actually a nine. Let's see if I can come into focus. Come on. Okay, it's kind of hard to see that, but this is the uh, nine and a half foot right there. Let me see if I can come into focus. Yeah, right there. Okay, so Akuma, um, nine and a half foot length action, uh, six to 12 pounds, quarter to half ounce. Now this rod, I actually have a lot of fun using. Um, actually, both are really good. Uh, this one, I use a two ounce, even though it's rated to half ounce. Um, I use a two ounce weight and it works pretty well. Um, I probably would not use anything heavier than that. So again, Akuma salmon steelhead rod, um, nine and a half foot. Um, real, um, one of my trusty old pen battle two 4,000. And this one, I have it spooled with a uh, 15 pound braid, okay? And that is uh, about the perfect size for surf fishing here on the Oregon coast. Um, I used to use 20 pound, but I, I feel, um, that might be a little bit overkill. So I switched to the 15 pound braid and, um, it, it's, it lets you cap maybe slightly further, not, not by much. I can't really tell, but I like it more because it's a thinner diameter. Um, it's still very, very sensitive line. You can get a lot of line on this 4,000 size reel. So for 15 pound braid, you can get well over 300 yards on this uh, reel. So that's plenty of line. Okay. Very good reel. Seal drag. There is no anti reverse switch there. Uh, it's very reliable, um, cast a country mile. The drag is awesome. And um, I really like the handles, a rubber grip, so your hands won't slip. Um, so again, size 4000 Pen Battle 2. All right, now this setup is the same reel, the size 4000 Pen Battle 2. And this one is a nine foot. Let me see if, if we can come into focus on that spec right there. Um, this is rated up to two ounce. I chuck a two ounce with this and it's fine. Okay. The nine foot is up to, is rated two ounce. The nine and the half foot is rated to a uh, half ounce. But again, I use, um, two ounce for both of these rod and they work just fine. Um, again, uh, braid line, 15 pound test. Um, I got gray color here. I just like the gray color line, um, and, and the green one. Uh, it tends to be less visible underwater. It blends in pretty well. So, all right, so that is my rod and reel setup. So let's go do some surf fishing. Fish on guys, fish on, woo! Okay, here we go, first fish of the day. Pretty slow start, man. I got three hooks on. Oh no, did it come off? Oh no, it didn't. Awesome. The tide is coming up. Just to give you an idea what type of tide I'm fishing. I know a lot of people have asked me, so which tide is best? incoming or outgoing it really depends on your location i would say oh yeah i have caught fish in both tide doesn't really matter right now it is an incoming tide okay don't come off man okay here we go here we go Oh my lord, that is a huge one. Holy cow, guys, look at that. Holy cow, that's a big one. Okay, guys, here is my first fish. Okay, we're gonna go 0.9. Point. 
0.98 kilogram. 0.98 kilogram, okay? That's pretty good. So look at the size of her. That is a big, big perch. But because it's a female, we're gonna we're gonna let him go. Sorry, let her go. Because she's she's gonna give uh, babies for future generations, okay? Wow, that's the biggest perch I've ever caught this year so far. Look at the size of her. She is huge. 0.98 kilograms. I'm not that's that's almost one kilo. That's what? I don't know. That's probably around two pounds. That's a big one, man. Okay, here comes a wave. I think we're gonna let it go right about now. There she goes. Nope, other way, buddy, other way. There she goes. There we go. Fish on, guys. Fish on. What is this, number three? Number three on the gulf sandworm again. No, he feels really small. He feels really, really tiny. I don't think he's gonna count. I might keep this one. I think I'll keep it and uh, bring him home because I need fish. Should have kept that first one. That first one was big. Let's see how big this guy is. Whoa, whoa. That's some rod shake in there. Come on, baby. What are you? I hope you're another two pounder. I doubt it though. We'll see. When the water's rushing back out, don't try to force it or else you'll rip the hook out. Just let the next wave bring it in. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice red tail, guys, right there. That's a keeper. Straight to the frying pan. Awesome hook set, too. Took the bottom hook. go guys fish on fish on let's see what it took you know what what happened is uh this is only my second bite in about two hours of fishing um so i began trying every kind of lure every kind of bait well not every kind but i have a mini crankbait on this one and i have a gulp sandworm and i also have uh frozen mole crabs sand crabs a gentleman to my left gave them to me. Um, he saw that I was having very little luck. So let's see what this guy took. Did he take the, the mini crankbait or the sandworm or the sand crab? He took the sandworm. All right, there it is. Okay, just a little guy though right there. Just under a pound. So that was a sand crab, and there's a mole crab, and there's a mini crankbait, okay? Put him back. Nope, you're going the wrong way. They always tend to swim upstream. Let's try that again. Which one is it gonna be this time? Oh, 
my lord, that was a hit. Holy cow. Did you see that hit? Jeez. <laughs> that guy hit like a truck. Another nice one, guys. Wow. I haven't had a hard hit like that in a while. That was pretty awesome. I don't think it's a double. Because when there's a double, the, you, the rod usually shakes a lot more. Okay, buddy. Come on in. I'm going to walk back. When you are reeling these guys in, the best way is to walk back. Okay? Reel in slowly and walk back. Don't just stand at one spot. Okay, what are you? Oh, I see him. Let that wave bring it in. See that incoming wave? Let, let that wave help bring in the fish. Oh man, don't come off, baby. Don't come off. There's another wave coming in, so that's gonna help push it. It's gonna help push the fish back. So there you go, just like that. Oh, he's a monster. Holy snap. Good size right there, guys. Awesome hook set. All right, guys, there's the other fish. Second fish. Take out the hook. So you just want to take an object and you want to hit the head. Okay, so to bleed it again, you can cut the gills or just go behind the gill and cut it right there. And then once again, cut behind the gill on the other side. To clean these surf perch, it's pretty easy. You want to cut behind the gill and then um, run your knife along the back. Now just lift up the fillet with your thumb and just work your knife all up and down the fillet from the uh, back all the way to the tail end. Once you reach the belly cavity, just uh, lift up the fillet and cut the pin bones and then just cut above the uh, rib cages until you get to the uh, belly area. Now for the other side, you do the same thing. You just cut behind the gill, run your knife along the back, um, make that incision, and then just carefully uh, cut the meat away from the bone. When I first cleaned the surf perch, I did a pretty poor job at it. But over time, you know, of course, you'll get better and better. It helps if you have a sharp knife. Um, contrary to what people say, a sharp knife is actually a lot safer because the cut is more effortless and your cut will be more precise with a sharp knife. Now to remove the skin, just uh, grab the tail end and um, grab the uh, skin with your uh, hand and just kind of gently pull the skin back. You can also push a knife forward but I just sometimes a lot is easier just to pull the you know the skin back. Now right behind the belly area um, there's a there's some bone which is the bone that attaches to the anal fin. Make sure you remove that. Now just feel for the pin bones which runs right above the belly cavity and just cut to one side of it and now you have the bottom fillet now just clean up any excess bone that you don't want from the bottom fillet now for the back fillet just uh, feel for the pin bone again and then just cut right behind it and that's it you're done So here is a alternative method to cleaning a surf perch. Um, you just cut one side off, um, including the belly cavity and the bones. And then you simply feel where the uh, belly cavity begins, where you know where the belly bone is, and just shear off all those bones. Um, this method is uh, 
might be a little easier for beginners but um, either way works um, they're, they're easy to clean all right so that's about it guys hey thanks for watching um, I will see you next time have fun fishing tight lines Okay, there is our surf perch fillet. That looks pretty good, don't it? Now these make really good fish tacos. But if you want to keep it simple, just marinate it in soy sauce overnight and uh, pan sear in the morning in butter.